crumbled concrete and rusting pipe. It's all that remains of Factoria. It was billed as Saskatchewan's first industrial park, but it was built on a foundation of gullibility and greed. 1912. Saskatoon was booming like nobody's business. New office buildings and hotels raised the skyline, and new houses lined new streets. In 10 years, Saskatoon mushroomed from a hamlet of 113 to a city of thousands. They, they did their own census and they said, oh, we've got 28,000 people here on such and such a day in 1912. And uh, I'm sure that's ad adding uh, every salesman going through town and every child in the womb. Don Kerr is a local historian of Saskatoon's first building boom. He says no one in 1912 yeah. doubted the city's great future. The sky's the limit. There, there was going to be no stop to how big Sas Saskatoon was going to get. After all, if you've gone from 100 people to 28,000 people, why shouldn't you say 60,000? Why shouldn't you say 100,000? The boom was a magnet for entrepreneurs dreaming of fortune. Billy Silverwood was such a man. He was a horse trader who bought land just north of Saskatoon. Silverwood believed the city would grow so quickly that his land would soon be worth a fortune. But it wasn't just location that attracted Silverwood. It was water. Silverwood's land had a natural spring. He opened the Silverwood Springs bottling plant and sold his water in Saskatoon. The market was ripe. Saskatoon's water was contaminated by sewage, and every summer people died of typhoid fever. Silverwood boasted his water was absolutely pure. The water caught the eye of a businessman from Chicago, a man named Robert Glass. He needed a good source of water for a brewery. He bought the Silverwood farm and changed the name to Factoria. He billed it as Saskatchewan's first industrial park. If a city was going to grow, if you were going to make your money back, you had to industrialize. Glass sold residential lots for $500. He boasted there would be factories worth a million dollars, jobs for 500 people, and houses for their families. Glass became the greatest of all the advertisers. Each of the two newspapers, morning and evening, had a full page and sometimes a full page and a half page. There were ads that said, don't you want to learn, earn the unearned increment? Why work for a living when you can get your money for nothing by just investing it? By 1913, several companies had signed on. A flour mill and a sawmill, an implement manufacturer, two brick factories, and a hotel. The future of Factoria seemed absolutely assured. 1914 and the world was at war. No longer was there money for grandiose schemes. The dream of Factoria died. The brewery was never built. Hundreds of people who bought residential lots lost their money overnight. So Factoria was the last and the greatest of the industrial dreams. Even the spring water that started it all hit hard times. The city cleaned up its own drinking water. And ironically, Silverwood's natural spring was contaminated by runoff from his barn. The name Factoria is no longer on the map, but Silverwood is. It's the name of this neighborhood in North Saskatoon. The city did eventually reach Billy Silverwood's farm, 70 years too late for Factoria. For the CBC News Hour, I'm Bill Wazer.